another example, and now we're going to deal with the non-conservative forces. So, uh, another example, a rigid, prompt, massless, here is M1, and then from this line, this is... <coughs> We have a spring, right? We, we can play, or just add whatever you like. Make my life harder, or will not. It will not come out. Right? How many degrees of freedom? Three. Hmm. Any other suggestion? Four. Hmm. So Ashkan said three. Any other suggestion? Or you agree with him? Right. One degree freedom for a simple pendulum here, let's call it theta. And <coughs> that takes care of the degrees of freedom of the first mass. Then the second mass, we just solved a similar example, it has two degrees of freedom, right? Maybe give the same names, R and <coughs> another angle, call it phi or so. Okay? So three degrees of freedom, Q1, you got to select your Qs. Nobody gonna tell you about them. I have two masses, so I'm going to write down two position vectors and differentiate, get the velocity, then I'm almost done. But in this problem, we are giving two forces, P and Q, one horizontal and one vertical. And like I said, if they are just generic forces like this, <coughs> then the default is that they are non-conservative loads. So the right hand side of some equations, not necessarily all the equations, mm -hmm. because these P and Q may not affect some of the degrees of freedom. Right? We write down an equation for each degree of freedom. So some of the right hand sides may not be zeros now, and we need to get these terms, right? What is the equation for the non-conservative load? It's, it's here. This guy is simply summation over your masses, Roger, your non-conservative load. I dotted with your velocity coefficient. That's it. So again, I don't need anything beyond the velocity vector. Okay? So let's see how to apply. We can just train ourselves how to apply this here for this example. Any question? Any question, please? Okay. So let's start. Your R1, please. Let's have maybe I and J inertial frame. So this is length L. So position vector mass one, you can write it in E R E theta or I and J, whatever you like. Let's work I and J. So this guy is L sine in the I direction and negative cosine in the J direction, correct? And I need R2. It's the same actually. The R of the mass 2 is R1 plus this little part of the spring. So the exact same expression. <coughs> I'll even copy it to the same color. So I have here L sine in the i direction and L cosine in the j direction. Okay? And I'm going to add the part that's coming from the spring. Remember that this is phi and this is theta. So this, is, this angle is phi plus theta. So R cosine that in the negative j and sine that phi plus theta in the i. R cosine phi plus theta. This is in position. Any question about the position vectors? So what you have written? This, this is mixed up. R2 is equal to L sine theta? R2 is equal to two terms, 
one is L sine theta and one is R sine theta plus y. Minus L cosine theta and R cosine theta plus y. Sines together, cosines together. Then I'm going to differentiate. Luckily, it's once because since this term is really messy, if I differentiate twice, it's done. So R1 dot, here is R1 dot, it's easy because L is constant. So just the variation coming from theta. So I have theta dot here, cosine theta i plus sine theta g. R2 dot. I have something in the i and something in the g, right? I'm just initial frame, so no worries about the derivatives. Just differentiate the components. This guy is L cosine theta theta dot. This guy is R dot, because R is very sine phi plus theta. Then R cosine phi plus theta times phi dot plus theta dot. And the same here, here's the negative, the negative L sine theta theta dot plus R dot cosine phi plus theta, and again negative R sine phi plus theta times phi dot plus theta dot. It's very nice. Any questions so far, please? It's just differentiation so far, they didn't do anything. Any question? Hmm? Okay, so do uh, it when your pace, we have a kinetic energy is one half m r one dot square plus one half m two r two dot square. So one half m one, this guy squared is easy. Simply l the square theta dot square plus cosine square plus sine square is one plus one half m two. <coughs> So maybe this is a red bracket. Y dot plus theta dot in the i direction. So I have a red bracket and I have a blue bracket. So the red bracket as is squared plus the blue bracket as is squared. So it's a bit see here and you will find a lot of terms going together cancelling and a lot of terms sine squared plus cosine squared which is unity. So it will, will be a bit better. So this is your kinetic, I'm not going to do it. Your potential is, for the mass 1 is negative m1g L cosine theta. For the mass 2, can you tell me what is the mass 2 please? What's the potential for the mass 2? Come on. <coughs> hmm. Mg times the elevation. What's the elevation? L plus R. Yeah, L plus R sine of theta phi. All the way. It's simply the y component here, right? So <coughs> L cosine theta and R cosine find theta plus the spring thing which is one half k r minus the initial <coughs> length plus y. So we're done with kinetic potential. You gotta turn your crank to get the left hand side of each equation. I'm not gonna do that with you. We had enough training to this problem and last time. I'm gonna do with you the right hand side, the non-conservative part due to the forces P and Q. Okay?
this general rule is the QNCJ is summation over all your masses, each non conservative load dotted with the velocity coefficient, this is dot, with respect to your generalized velocity. So let's do the equations. I have R, theta, and phi. Let's do the R equation. What's the R equation? Yes, d by dt, partial your Lagrangian, partial your R dot minus partial Lagrangian, partial R equal Q n c R, right? What's your Q n c R? <clears throat> it's from here, it's two masses, so I have term one plus term two. Right? What's term one? It's the forces acting on mass one dotted with partial R one dot partial what? Partial what? Theta. And the R equation, R so this is partial little R. R dot. Plus your force 2, non-conservative, we're just considering the non-conservative part. Dotted with partial r2 dot, your velocity with this respect to your original okay? What is your non-conservative force on the mass 1, please? I'll, I'll give you some time to write. This is the main point of training, just watch me doing it. <coughs> What's the non-conservative 1? Q1. Q1. Q1 in what direction? It's Q, in what yeah. direction? In the j direction, very good. What about this guy? Partial r1 dot, partial little r dot. It is r1 dot. Differentiate with respect to little r dot, please. What do you get? Zero. zero. That's great. So this is zero. So it means that your non conservative load, this load q, doesn't affect the, the r motion, the r equation at all, right? Which is not yeah, I mean, This q should not affect this motion. What about the other thing? What is F non conservative 2? What's that? P in the i direction. And what about this guy? R2 dot. Here is the velocity. It's a long expression, something in the i and something in the j. And we need to differentiate with respect to little r dot. Little r dot shows only once here and there. And it's linear. It will always be linear. It will always be linear. Your velocity. Always linear in the velocities, in the generalized velocities. We're always getting coefficients. Coefficients of our little q dots. Coefficients of r dot, theta dot, and phi dot. They are always coefficients. They are called velocity coefficients. So what's the coefficient of r dot here? It's sine phi plus theta in the i, negative cosine phi plus theta in the g. So this is r. So what? How did they say? Sine phi plus theta in the i, negative cosine phi plus theta in the j. Okay? So what is your Q in CR? Do the dot product, please. Do the dot product. P sine phi P plus sine phi plus theta. Right? Okay? So this is a constructive way to do it. You can do it in a smart way. If you're good at Newtonian mechanics, I can do it, of course. Because what is Q in the CR? In C is, no, it's non-conservative, due to non-conservative loads. What is the Q non-conservative in the R direction? So all the non-conservative forces <coughs> affecting the R motion. If this is P, what is the one affecting the R motion in the direction of the R? Just get it. Here you will find this is P, this is that guy, this is the vertical, this is phi plus theta. So it's P sine phi plus theta is in that direction. That will elongate your R, okay? And it's the positive because it will elongate the R. So indeed it's P sine phi plus theta. If you want to get it, if you're smart enough to get it from Newtonian mechanics, good luck. If not, and you want to do it, just turn in the crank. Here it is. Okay? Any question? 
So let's get together the theta equation, please. The theta equation, d by dt partial neural Lagrangian partial theta dot minus partial neural Lagrangian partial theta equals q n c theta, which is again it's your force of the mass one dotted with velocity one with respect to your generalized velocity, which is what partial r one dot partial what theta dot. See how many times I told you, don't let it pass. If you have any problem, stop me. <coughs> Plus, the second force, dotted with the second velocity with respect to your theta dot. Let's get that. OK, I know you already told me that this is q in the j direction, and this is p in the i direction. What about the velocity coefficients? Let's get the velocity, the coefficient of theta dot from r1 dot. It is R1 dot, I need the velocity of the, the coefficient of theta dot. It's everything, just remove theta dot. So this guy is L cosine theta i, not the other way around, yeah. <coughs> sine theta j. Okay? And what is uh, partial R2 dot, partial theta dot? This is again a long term. Get that coefficient of theta dot from here. So we have L cosine theta, this was multiplying theta dot. And we have also this term here, which is R cosine, plus R cosine, both angles. This is in the I, and we have in the G, L sine, of course, will be plus R sine. So let's do, please, Q. <coughs> N C theta. Let's do the dot product, please. Let's do the dot product. This is J dotted with two components. So I'm going to take the J1. So this is Q L sine theta from here. Plus, from the second term, I have P dotted with this guy. This is in the I direction. So I'm going to take only the I direction. So P L cosine plus R cosine. Any question that this is the QNC theta? Any question? Please. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some time to 